Hi there, it's Kanika. This is an episode from the That's Total Mom Sense archives, which date back to 2019. If you're new here, there's a chance you haven't heard this one yet. And if you've been tuning in since the beginning, you'll surely be able to gather new ideas this time around. I know I have. I hope you enjoy it. On to the show. Hi, I'm Kanika, and you're listening to That's Total Mom Sense, the podcast, where I interview public figures on their life lessons in parenting, legacy, and built-in sixth sense. Hey, what's up? I'm Kelly Rowland, and you're checking out That's Total Mom Sense. Hi, this is Chelsea Clinton, and my experience on That's Total Mom Sense was fantastic. It's me, Bobby Brown. Can't wait to share my story. Thank you to my guests, brand partners, community, and you for making the show possible. Episodes release every Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can join my tribe by logging on to thatstotalmomsense.com and by following me on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Kanika Chadda Gupta. Now let's dive in to today's episode. A friend of mine once said, traveling with your partner or friends is a vacation, but traveling with kids is a trip. (laughs) But you know what? It doesn't have to be. You can still have fun when traveling with your kids. And today I'm joined by just the expert who can teach us how. Hitha Palipu is an entrepreneur, investor, and writer. She's a lifestyle content creator where she shares simple solutions to help women live their best lives. She is the creator of hashtag five smart reads, a daily curation of the five must read stories that reaches over 30,000 readers. Her blog, Hitha on the Go, reaches hundreds of thousands of readers worldwide and became known for its travel and productivity content. Her first book, How to Pack, Travel Smart for Any Trip was published by Clarkson Potter in 2017. It has been released worldwide, translated into German and Italian, and is currently in its third printing with 50,000 copies in circulation. Hitha and the book were featured by the New York Times, People, Travel and Leisure, and Elle. She is currently the CEO of Roshan Pharmaceuticals, a pharmaceutical company developing injectable presentations of oral drugs. Hitha is an active angel investor focused on funding women-led and women-focused startup companies. She graduated from the University of Washington with degrees in biochemistry and history, and she lives in New York City with her husband and two sons. Hitha, welcome to That's Total Mom Sense. Thank you for having me, and I am very tired after hearing all that. (laughs) Well, you have such an illustrious career, so I had to share it all. I personally am a big fan of your work and your blog, Hitha on the Go. When I see your newsletters, I love how thorough and specific they are, and they're an instant pick-me-up. I love getting them in my inbox. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Absolutely. Um, And your manifesto um, is a testament to that. And I just want to share it with our listeners. So it's pack faster, work smarter, learn more, feel and look your best, give graciously, and live your best life. Now, what woman or individual wouldn't want to do all of those things? So it's really great. Thank you. Let's take it back. Um, Tell us a little bit about your childhood and what it was like growing up. So my childhood in certain regards was very normal and in certain regards was very unique. I grew up in like typical middle class, nice homes, great schools, lifestyle, which I'm lucky to have, but we moved around quite a bit. And that was due to the nature of my father's job as a pharmaceutical researcher, oftentimes a better a bigger and better job would present itself after a few years. We would always be a decision as a family, but we decided, do we move? Do we stay? We always chose to move and up we would go to a new place. So I've kind of grown up everywhere. I was um, born in Syracuse, New York, mostly raised outside of Philadelphia. And we kept boomeranging back to Philadelphia, but also lived in Ohio and Colorado and England and Seattle and North Carolina. So it's been, it's been a little bit of a journey. And <laughs> a big part of my childhood was our annual visits to India every summer, almost all summer long. And with that came the packing for India, which always involved 
suitcases filled with family's favorite toiletries and foods and toilet paper because back then toilet paper wasn't as common as it is now in India. (laughs) And, you know, my mother would pack very efficiently for herself and for me. So we had more room to bring everybody else things. And I really credit both watching my mother prep and pack for those trips and those trips themselves for inspiring me to do the same as an adult and just love traveling regardless, and then make sure I'm doing the same with my children as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I can totally relate to you. Um, I mean, my sister and I would want to pack everything under the sun whenever we'd you know visit our nani in Bombay. Mm-hmm. And it was like cookie crisps, lucky charms, macaroni and cheese, you know, like our, our suitcases were filled to the brim. So I, I totally can, um, reminisce about that with you. (laughs) (laughs) So both of us are Hey Mamas. There was a feature that was written about you and your dad in particular called my father is my mentor. Um, tell us about that because it was such a poignant, um, article. Thank you. I mean, it, the title says it all. My father has truly been my mentor my entire life. And I guess if we're going to talk about my childhood, one unique thing my parents did was whenever I misbehaved or acted out of line, I never got grounded or things taken away from me. The way my parents chose to quote unquote punish me is either my mom would make me write an essay. And she goes, I don't care if you write, I hate mom, like all across three pages, but you're going to write three pages and get Mm. whatever you're feeling out of your system. When my dad would hand me the medical dictionary and assign me 10 words and ask me to write an essay, linking them all together. Wow. (laughs) That is so innovative. Oh my God. I'm totally using that on my kids. I'm fully going to do the same with mine as well. And uh, what it did is it got me connecting what I heard him talking about work to my own education. And it made me more interested in what he was developing, you know, for these big multinational pharmaceutical companies. And I think it's those two very unique punishments are very much the reason why I, to this day, I'm, I'm a writer. I work with him in industry. We have our own pharmaceutical company, as you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and this is our second company together. So Clearly something's stuck and something's working, but they really, my father is my mentor with, um, little work challenges, big work challenges, whatnot. He's always been there. And I do think that if he had gone into any other industry, if he ended up in energy or oil and gas or academia, there would have been this desire on my end to kind of follow him wherever he went. So it's been a real blessing to be able to build companies with my father to be able to develop such incredible products and as well have that time with him. I think we n- never know how much time we ever get with our with our parents and our loved ones. And the fact that in choosing to work together multiple times, I've been able to buy a lot of extra time that I otherwise wouldn't have had if I worked in a different environment or in a different industry or a different company. Completely. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, Can you share some of the milestones in your career? And I'm sure your father had a hand in those as well. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Yes, absolutely. I think one big one was closing our seed round when I was eight months pregnant earlier this year. Wow. (laughs) And my book, getting the book deal, writing the book during Rose's first year of life and all the support my parents gave me when it came out and I was traveling for the book launch and they just being so hands-on with Roe. That was a huge accomplishment. And I really got to credit my mom with the success of the book because I got approached by my publisher um, via email the day I came home from the hospital with Roe. Both my father and my husband, you know, appropriately said, you just had a baby. Are you sure you want to write a book? Is this a good idea? And my mom was the one who stepped in and said, no, this is a huge opportunity. Book deals don't come like this ever. You were going to take advantage of it. You were going to say yes, and we were going to make it work. So mom really deserves the credit. The book is dedicated to her. So I guess 
surviving 2015 also like writing a book, (laughs) launching a company and having a baby that one year is definitely a huge milestone (laughs) of the fact that I'm still standing and (laughs) And thriving girl, thriving, thriving, (laughs) too tired to thrive right now. (laughs) And I would also say, um, bridge to act a company that I founded and ran with my best friend between my father's and my two companies you know, it was not a successful startup. We had to shut it down, but I'm really, really proud that we came together. We built something, we operated something, we did get some traction and that we both had the bravery to say, this is, this isn't working. And rather than throw more money and put more of our time and potentially endanger our friendship in the process, we made the decision that we were really proud of what we built. We did drive a good amount of impact. And at this time it made sense for us to, part ways professionally, but continue to stay close personally. Starting a business is already an incredibly risky and stressful endeavor. Doing it with someone who is one of the closest people in the world to you can also be scary and stressful. And I won't say it was ever perfect. We definitely had our fair share of of conflict, but Mm -hmm. I'm really proud that to this day, we're still closer than ever. Oh, that's great. What inspired you to launch Hit On The Go nine years ago? It is the same blog origin story that every blogger has. I needed a creative outlet to offset my very uncreative job. And (laughs) at the time I was traveling all the time. So I needed something I could do with minimal equipment and could do kind of from my computer. I was reading a ton of blogs and decided, well, I can write. Maybe I'll just do this. Mm-hmm. And so I started with, um, it was a lifestyle blog, like everybody else's a little bit of fashion, a little bit of food. My poor husband, like I tortured him, make, have, making him take my pictures. He, <laughs> hated it. he was a really good sport for like the first couple of years with that. And then he said, I am not a photographer. Please don't make me do this ever again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to work your camera. I don't like this. Like we work so hard. Why are we spending our weekends doing this? Yeah. There. But that's when I started moving into writing what I truly know, knew versus kind of what everybody else was writing. And that was about packing because I was traveling all the time and I was traveling to India four times a year. I was gone three weeks out of every month and my life was very much lived out of a suitcase. So one December morning, the day before we're, the day we were about to leave for our a vacation, I published a post 10 essentials for a long flight. And it was just the best graphic that I had designed to date. I wrote it. I linked it. It was very, you know, you mentioned that I'm very detailed and specific when I write things. I made very specific recommendations of it's this at these headphones specifically that I love for noise canceling headphones. It's this sort of cardigan blanket that I love for this reason. It's this neck pillow for this reason and published it. I think I pinned it on Pinterest, boarded my flight. And then by the time we had ended up in Sukhothai, Thailand, I pulled up my computer to just check in some emails, pulled up the post and I had seen it had been shared on Pinterest 6,000 times since I had gone on the computer and I had my best traffic day and one and more traffic in that day than I had in my blog for the entire year. And I was like, whoa. Right. You went viral with that. That went viral. And then I decided, I started looking on the internet to see who else was really writing about packing. And the only content that was on there was quit your job, sell all your possessions, live out of a suitcase, which is not how most people pack and travel. I mean, right. it's wonderful if you're able to do that, but it's not realistic for most people. Most people take a few business trips a year, a couple of vacations a year, visiting family. And those are very specific trips that often, if they're, people aren't packing in a carry-on, likely they would like to, or they would just would like to pack more efficiently than they maybe have been. So mm-hmm. I doubled down and made that a priority to create content on this front, show people how I was doing it as my own process evolved. I took them on that journey, shared them the few little tips that worked for me. And because of that 
type of authority that I'd built in that space, was able to get some video projects with about.com and with Ladies Home Journal. I did a partnership with Quarterly where I had a quarterly subscription box filled with my favorite travel essentials. The book obviously came from that as well. And You know, to this day, I still find a perfectly packed suitcase like as satisfying as like the pop of a champagne cork or the sound of my kid laughing, (laughs) a feeling after like a really good workout when you feel like you're on top of the world. It is one of the, it's a very satisfying feeling. That said, I never set out to be packing girl. I love Mm -hmm. travel. I do find satisfaction in packing well, but my true passion really lies in helping women, namely, save time and energy and money on the things they have to do so they have more of that to do the things they actually want to do. I still stand true to my Kindle, although now Kindles have evolved from the model shown there. I Mm -hmm. certainly still carry around like a beautiful like shawl with me. That specific one, I mean, I think the brand is shuttered down. So I have a, a white and Warren cashmere travel wrap that is just the most delicious, yummiest scarf blanket ever. Mm. Um, The AKG headphones, I still swear by. I love that. Now most noise canceling headphones, you don't need AA batteries anymore. They're all USB, micro USB chargeable, but those are a very, very comfortable one that I'm a fan of. The battery pack, if you have an away suitcase, You will likely get the battery pack, so you don't necessarily need to buy a separate one. Mm -hmm. Compression socks, for sure. Never, ever, ever travel without them. And then I also like to, because I get really cold on planes, bring along a set of cashmere socks to put on top of them. That's great. Walk us through your beauty routine that, um, you know, we can do with or without kids. Yes. Uh, And actually, Ro watches me do it, and he wants to do it, too. So I'm, like, doing it on my face and on his face. And that's Uh It's really cute. I, I enjoy um, I enjoy a young man that knows the importance of good skincare. Yes, there you go. Start him young. Start him young. I don't wear makeup at all when I travel. I just am going to take it off anyway, so why even bother? So I always go to the airport naked-faced with just having done my normal routine at home. Either I do this in like the airport lounge or bathroom or on the flight. I do like to spritz everywhere just to prep my skin to receive more moisture. I kind of use this as a time to just bring a whatever serum, not necessarily one of my favorite serums with me. Anything that's got a lot of hyaluronic acid, the Glossier Super Bounce is a good one. Images Hyaluronic Acid Serum is another good choice. L'Oreal makes a really good hyaluronic acid serum, Mm -hmm. but that's what I put on my skin first. And then I follow it up with a mask from Alchemy Forever. This is a Swiss skincare brand that I am obsessed with. And this mask is just the greatest. It is so hydrating. It is so rich. And it's got a beautiful bit of a bronzy tint to it. So Mm -hmm. you don't look like you put a mask on. It um, goes on, absorbs relatively clear, but leaves you with just like a little bit of a glow. So like you look good while you're masking. Mm -hmm. And then I follow that up with oil again. I'm not precious about which oil I bring. It's usually something I have like just a little bit of at home. Wander Beauty's Glow Ahead Oil is a great option here. Um, after the whole Sunday Riley like like scandal happened, I'm moving away from their oils, which sucks because I love them. I don't feel right about it. Another favorite oil is a Naturopathica's Carrot Seed Replenishing Oil. That one is just, just so yummy. And I'm trying out herbivores Phoenix oil right now, and I really like it. So, and oil. And then Mm -hmm. if I nap, I always put like my little silk eye mask on. And I have one from Slip. I have another one from Hill House Home. They're both fantastic. Close to landing time, I will um, either slap on some Wander Beauty eye masks Mm -hmm. or use a caffeinated eye cream to help wake my eyes up because that's the part of the, um, your skin is much thinner there than the rest of your face. And that's the place to, you'll lose the moisture fastest. So it's important to do right before landing what you can to just completely replenish that, um, sensitive area with moisture. Yeah. I spritz and reapply the mask. Um, sometimes throughout the flight, if it's, if I'm going to California, I think 
I might do it once in between if I'm flying like to India or Europe. Um, sometimes I do it twice. Once your skin starts feeling dry, repeat the whole routine. And upon landing, I do like respritzing, doing that whole routine and then finishing with an SPF if it's um, still daytime when we land because SPF is very, very important. Oh, and for lips, the Laneige lip mask, it's like mm-hmm. comes in a little pink tub is my favorite lip balm. And I just, anytime Sephora has a sale, I feel like I buy 20 tubs of it and just keep (laughs) it on hand for one in every purse, one in every toiletry bag and at home. And then big sunglasses are your best friend. (laughs) Yes, there you go. Especially if you're makeup free. Exactly. And like a top knot. That's awesome. (laughs) Well, we will link everything you mentioned in our show notes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like this long ass list, but I love it. Um, and you mentioned Wander Beauty a few times. Um, yeah, they are a beauty brand partner of ours. So if you use MomSense twenty, all caps, um, you get twenty percent off your order. So remember to do that if you are buying anything Wander Beauty. I want to hear about your motherhood journey first, and then we'll get into traveling with kids. So tell us about how motherhood changed you. Oh, (laughs) motherhood. It has been, it is by far the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the best thing too for me, but I'm wiped every single day. These two boys are magic. I love them so much. They've taught me so much. They've helped me grow as a person, let go of things that don't matter, become really um, laser clear on what my priorities are. I'm so in awe of them. I'm so in love with these two little guys that I grew and birthed. And that itself, in and of itself was wild because I did not love pregnancy. I had okay pregnancies. My first trimesters were rough. I was basically in bed for most of them. Wow. Um, and with Ro, I, when I was pregnant with Ro, I could take that luxury. I didn't have anyone else to take care of. With Rocky, I had my four-year-old to take care of, right. three-year-old. He was three-year-old at the time, as well as a company that I was actively fundraising for. So there was a lot of just pure willpower pushing through that was hard. And yeah. I know, I don't know if like our family is truly complete yet, but I am fully done being pregnant and very open to adoption if we decide we want to have another child. But I did not love pregnancy. And I feel like we should say, we should be open about that, that it can be really, really hard. And the shift in your body and the shift of your brain and your life physically, mentally, emotionally, no longer just being your own is never more um, present than when you're pregnant. Yes, I completely agree. And it's something that you, um, you know, don't really have control over, you know, your body's um, changing and you just, yeah, Yeah. exactly. You can't anticipate what's going to happen. And then it's like literally up to the last moment, moment, are you going to have your water break? Are you going to have experienced contractions? Like you don't like, no. And you just, you, you literally have to surrender. And that's such a hard thing to do. It's so hard. And you think, oh my God, when is this baby going to come? When is this baby going to come? And then the baby comes and that's when the yeah. real work begins because yeah. the, that fourth trimester is no joke. It yeah. is physically, emotionally, mentally so demanding. And we're told so much that it's, it's supposed, we're told that by media and I think largely male controlled company media mm-hmm that it should look easy and we should bounce back and you're a super mom and you're, you should be able to, and you should do it all. When in fact, no, that's impossible. Yeah. That having a village, there's a reason that for so, for thousands of years, we did have these live in tight knit communities where everyone jumped into one another. And I think in being South Asian, we get still very much have that. It's right. such a huge part of our culture Whenever a woman becomes a mother, there is this rallying around her (laughs) by all the other women in the family. But the flip side of that is the help is wonderful, but often it comes with them wanting to do things in their way and you not being able to or feeling uncomfortable with owning what it is you want and what you want your journey to be and articulating it in a way that is respectful, but also honors your wishes and what you want as a mother. 
I didn't have any of that with Roe. With Roe, I kind of deferred to everybody, but also felt very shut out of feeling like I was my child's mother. Postpartum depression, I have a feeling would have emerged regardless, but I think the Mm -hmm. severity of with which I had it with Roe, that was definitely a significant factor. Yeah. And it was hard. I I... did not feel secure in my motherhood identity (laughs) Mm -hmm. until like Roe was one and a half. Wow. Thank you for being so honest. And I mean, I, I can completely relate to you. I mean, I had my village rally the same way when I had twins and we actually kept it a surprise. So everyone was like, wow, she's effing huge because <laughs> you know? I was just so, so nervous. Um, I wanted everything to go smoothly when I delivered them. And same thing. I just relegated to um, adhering to the advice that everyone gave me. I like asked any twin mom, like, you know, so many questions, listen to my baby nurse and, you know, what the impetus of this podcast, that's total mom sense. The reason why I came up with this, you know, coin term mom sense is that we have a superpower. We have a sixth sense, a mom sense. And, you know, sometimes to hell with what your mom's telling you to do or your mom-in-law or your pediatrician or your friends, you can just trust that inner voice um, because that'll never steer you wrong when it comes to your kids. You just know. And, you know, I want to be able to um, uplift moms, first time moms um, in this way that, you know, you've got this, just, just trust your gut. Yeah. And I think that's why with Rocky, my pregnancy and my fourth trimester and this time around has been radically different. Um, That's great. I did have prenatal depression, which think I'm so lucky to have a psychiatrist as a father-in-law as well, who Mm -hmm. observes these signs, who I also have an incredible relationship with Mm -hmm. and who's been there for me um, during my own mental health struggles. And Mm -hmm has been very my advocate with the rest of the family and kind of my first line of defense of making sure I have the space to seek out the support as I need it and medical support with that. So I was in therapy throughout my entire pregnancy. I brought on a doula, you know, which my mother Mm -hmm. and my mother-in-law are still perplexed by. But (laughs) I wanted to, I I was going to have a second C-section because between both my pregnant children, I had a miscarriage I hemorrhaged after my DNC, and which was scary and awful yeah. in its own um, experience. But my OB wisely recommended that I opt for the C-section from the get-go so they could take the time to inspect my uterus, make sure right. everything was clear. I, there would never be any medical challenges because they never caught something that could have been caught. And I was happy to do that. So, but I ended up going into labor two weeks before my scheduled (laughs) (laughs) C-section. But so sitting in triage in the hospital, my doula was there. She was helping me work through the contractions. You know, she went out and made sure, communicated with us what was happening, why we had to wait for so long because I was going straight into the OR. Why isn't we just doing that? And that there were some emergency cases before me. And then afterwards, she hung out with me during when I was in recovery, which nobody tells you after like how long you're going to be sitting in that little random recovery room. It's like mm-hmm. three hours. Right. You're usually <laughs> left alone and you're like, what the damn hell? <laughs> and then a lactation consultant comes and you're like, yeah. I can't feel my legs right now. Why do you want to touch my boobs? Like Exactly. <laughs> and so she was with me. She helped, you know, he, Rocky was like, I'm just going to snooze. Yeah. But she just made sure skin to skin was really comfortable. After they came to take the baby, she hung out with me and until I was brought into my room. And then she called all our parents and said, do not come. Neither of these people have slept all night. Please oh. come at this time, which was that is awesome. amazing. Like we had a doula pair. So at any given time, they were both answering all my nursing questions. They came over multiple times in the hospital and then at home to make sure my nursing ex- journey was successful to this day, we're still friends and I text them and I want to hang out with them. They're wonderful. And, you know, that was also, we also made a really strong plan of, I need this, these people to take care of Roe. 
I need these people to take care of me. And this is how I need you to take care of me in this very specific way. This is how I want, I need to be taken care of right now. Right. Right. And this is how I would like to care for the baby. And this is where I think we should bring in some additional people. Now, this is such a privileged thing to say, and I wish it wasn't, and I wish this wasn't the case, but yes, I have a lot of family physically close by that also invested a lot of their time. Financially, I were able to afford a doula and a night nurse and our nanny, and then bring right. on an extra sitter for Row and have our nanny focus on Rocky's care because that was just the right next step for our family. This sounds so incredibly out of touch to a lot of moms. And I just want, if you're listening to this and this isn't your reality, do not feel bad about that either because I understand how extraordinarily lucky I am to be mm -hmm. able to have this. And right. I wish this was standardized and I wish this was normalized for every mother because frankly, the fact that women continue to survive and thrive without the support they truly need when they become mothers and the fact that our families are productive, contributing members of society without this level of help is a goddamn miracle, but women deserve better and mothers deserve better. So tell us from the beginning, phase one, packing. How do you pack for yourself? And then how do you pack for your kids? So I do have a couple of videos on my IGTV that went into how we packed for Disney in particular. So that's a good one to watch. And I break down, this is what I'm packing for me. This is what I'm packing for Ro. Mm -hmm. um, in my book, I detail out what I call a packing timeline. And I do start planning to pack a week in advance. That's when I'm writing my, my packing lists with the specific items that I want to bring for Ro and me, things like t-shirts and whatnot. I'm just like t-shirts, shorts, whatever, but specific shoes based on the um, weather and what we're doing, specific bags for me. And that also like the backpack that I know he likes the most and will actually carry gear we're bringing. Like, are we bringing a full-blown car seat or is he finally big enough for a booster? And are we renting that? Or are we bringing our own? And what bag do we store it in? Strollers, are we bringing the stroller or not? Um, that all starts a week in advance. And then throughout the week, I'm bringing all the items out, making sure things are washed, making sure our luggage is in good condition and like none of the wheels or handles are falling apart. Mm -hmm. I am ordering toiletries that we already don't have, like the sunscreens or bug repellent or things that are very specific to the destination. And then I start kind of packing it about a week, like three to four days in advance. So that way, the night before the flight, it really is packing up our personal items. So making sure he's got all of his entertainment for the flight, iPads charged. He only gets his iPad when we travel. There's okay. no iPad at home for policy, which just works for us. Mm -hmm. And also he gets bored of it after like 10 minutes. Like he's not someone who will be on it forever. We've actually noticed um, the best thing he loves to do on an airplane that also keeps him engaged is we bring along a small dry erase mar board with mm. markers and just a giant baggie of like little plastic animals. And we draw and create habitats for his animals like on the airplane when, and he prefers that more than any other activity I've ever found for him. That's so cool. We have to link this. Um... So it's like a mini dry erase board? A mini dry erase board, like a few colors, and then just like a bat. I feel like we have these like little tiny plastic animals everywhere in our house. So mm -hmm. I just grab a handful out of the bin they're in, toss them in like a stasher bag, and off we go. That's great. Any other um, toys that you pack or just, you know, modes for entertainment on the... Uh, no, I have him um, leading and letting him know. So, you know, we're going back on an airplane. This is about how long we'll be on the airplane. What do you want to do on the plane? And there is a mix of, we pack things that we have. And then I also will take him to like a nearby toy store or kid store and let him pick out one to two things for himself. And I always have one surprise thing for him. Oh, how fun. That's so great. And, and I can pack it now too. Now I go back and repack it. But this is the age that my mom started telling me to pack my own backpack in advance of flights. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good to teach them as young as possible. Let them put things in the suitcase. You'll go back and redo it. But the more ownership you give them of these things, the sooner you get them involved, it gets them excited about the whole process. 
Absolutely. I totally agree. And when you're actually packing the suitcase, um, do you do kind of a Marie Kondo, like rolling each um, article of clothing or do you put them in separate bags? Like, how do you do that? I, it depends on the trip. So Mm -hmm. some things I roll, some things I fold. I use packing cubes really only if we're doing a multi-city trip. Otherwise, everything kind of just goes in and I like to unpack right away. So I pack in kind of biggest, bulkiest to smallest, most squishable items. That's a very official packing term, squishable. Mm -hmm. Oh, And (laughs) (laughs) and that has served me really well um, for trips up to two weeks in a carry-on suitcase. And I'm also not afraid to do laundry on site. So if we're staying... For traveling with the kids, we're always either renting an Airbnb or staying in a like kind of a suite style setup where there is a kitchen for snacks and breakfast and there is a laundry facility on site somewhere. So I'm not spending a ton of money on um, hotel doing my own laundry for me. Although I have done that in the past because sometimes desperate times, desperate measures and it's okay too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what is your favorite like luggage brand for if you have one for kids and for yourself? Yeah, uh, Away is great, but mm-hmm. I've worked with um, iFly Luggage. They are a lower priced, also direct to consumer luggage brand that I'm very, very impressed with the quality. We've taken our luggage on our last few family trips together Disney, India. And definitely for Palm Springs. And for the baby, I actually, Ro, for Ro's first two and a half years until we took a really long trip, I packed him in the Low and Sons Catalina duffel bag. Mm-hmm. And that bag is fantastic for like babies to still not quite potty train because you can fit enough diapers and wipes for up to a week in that oh, wow. little bottom section. And mm-hmm. then the top has more than enough room for everything. But that kind of bag is when you should definitely use packing cubes because it really is a black hole kind of bag. So you want to keep clothes in one, maybe socks and bibs like in another and pack it by cube and have the cubes labeled. So unpacking is a lot easier and keeps things organized. Good to know. That's great. And um, what are some of your top tips for traveling with kids? Okay, the first trip is to just do it. It's going to be hard. It is a trip. It is not necessarily a vacation. It's not going to be the relaxing vacations you used to have. And trust me, you will have those vacations again one day too. But this is a time when How often do we have in our lives to just go away with our kids and give them our full undivided attention without the typical rigor of, have you eaten? Go use the bathroom. Like we have to go here. We have to go there. All the haves you have in your life, they just sort of Mm. melt away when you go away. And it's a chance to just be you guys and be silly and make memories and have fun and not stress about the typical life stuff. So it's really, if you can afford it, and they don't have to be expensive, but like just get away, even if it's just renting a house or doing a house swap with somebody who lives further out from you where there is some really cool stuff for kids going on. And like take your ego and like your preferences out of the equation. I guess this is really for your kids to have this time with you and for you to just let them be a kid. How often yeah. are you gonna- marvel over Big Bird at Sesame Place or when they see Mickey Mouse for the first time at Disney. You know, it's so what if it's loud and hot and (laughs) kids are screaming and you can smell another child's poop or maybe that's your child's poop and you just don't know? Yeah. (laughs) Like funny. That's parenthood in a nutshell. It is messy and chaotic and loud, but it's also magical. So sure you savor that. The second thing is is to start small with the trips. Start with like a day trip somewhere where you leave in the morning and you come back in the evening. Stretch that out to a weekend away and work your way up with whatever you feel comfortable with. And my third trip would be, and this is, I think, like a motherhood in general tip, but it's raise the kid you have and advocate for the kid you have versus expecting your kid to be something he or she isn't. 
you know, if your child has a tough time with transitions or new things, take the time to show pictures of where you're going, show pictures of the hotel room or the Airbnb you're renting, let them make choices about what they want to do. It's like zoo or kids museum. And like Mm -hmm. a two year old can make a decision off that and like, let them take some ownership and feel like they're an active planner in the journey, because that's, what's going to make them excited to one, go on that trip and for future family experiences together as well. Absolutely. And do you have any hacks up your sleeve related to packing or traveling and the like? I mean, I have a whole book of hacks. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) And then I also, please like get off Instagram and expect your trip to look like what you see other families doing on Instagram, particularly professional content creators. You were seeing one image out of maybe 500 they had to take that looks idyllic and peaceful and wonderful and that the kids are angels. All kids cry and scream and have a rough time with transitions or new experiences. And that's okay. They are kids. That's what they do. But the more you expose them to new things in a manner that they can handle and also make sure that there's plenty of playground time when you travel or kid friendly activity time, you're going to have a great time. When we went to London, we made sure we went to the first place we went to and every day was a playground. So Ro got to play first thing while my husband and I took turns sitting on the bench and eating our croissant while the other ran with him in the playground. Then we were able to handle the natural history museum there or an afternoon tea or just wandering through London, which was amazing. That's awesome. Um, I have some hacks that I want to share because I was definitely one of those reticent travelers that you mentioned. Um, and we only just did our first air travel when my third um, turned one. So my twins were two and the baby was one. So, you know, it like it was uh, definitely a task, but we just went for it. It was um, a family wedding in um in LA. And then we went to San Diego. And one thing that I did when I got on the plane was I had, um, chocolates for the passengers around us Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they just started laughing. And it was just such an endearing moment. I started like tearing up and almost crying. And I was like, this is my kid's first air travel. And I really don't know how it's going to go. I don't know if they're going to be wailing when their ears pop. I I just have no clue. So here, take a Ferrero. And everyone was just so um, amused by that. And then instead of like giving me the side eye when, you know, the kids did cry, which like, ironically, they slept the entire time on the way there. It was the way back. That was a total shit show. Um, so they slept like three and a half hours on that, um, flight from New York to LA. But, um, yeah, they, the, the passengers became our friends and they were like, Oh, what are their names? And like getting all chatty. And the second thing that, um, that you mentioned also was having entertainment and having it maybe be new entertainment. So when I packed their backpacks, I had all these new toys and like, you know, the, um, Crayola, um, what is it? The miracle markers where they don't actually they have like the color on the paper. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's the one. Yeah. So, um, I had all that stuff that was like brand new coloring books and so it was something new and they felt like it was like Christmas on the plane, you know? Um, and that occupied them for a bit because it wasn't toys that they already had at home. So Hitha, you are a voracious reader and you send a lot of recommendations in your um, email newsletter. Do you have any books that you can recommend that are great, like vacation, beach reads, um, parenting, self-care? Sure. So beach read, vacation read. I call these books brain candy books and they're all wonderful. The last, most recent one that I've read that fits in that category is called Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And it is one of November's Book of the Month Club picks. It is excellent. The writing is just so electric. Like you could feel the chemistry from the two lead characters literally coming off the page. It was so good. 
Mm. And um, it's getting a lot of buzz and I'm very happy it is. I loved it. Parenting books. I am reading Susan Wojnicki's um, How to Raise Successful People. You mm-hmm. know, her daughters are the head of 23 and Me and YouTube, and another is a the third is a huge physician. And she just has a lot of common sense advice that we all intrinsically know, but need to sometimes be reminded of. And another one that has been a good read for our family that my husband and I revisit um, every year is The Secrets of Happy Families by Bruce Fedler. And that one is just a great read to constantly revisit with your partner on how to make sure it's bringing a lot of business principles into your family, which works for my husband and I, it may not work for every family, but to have things like a motto that you revisit and family rules that you revisit and how bringing, getting your kids involved with that process as early as possible is actually great and gives them ownership of it. And then we can see that with Ro now, how he feels very like a little leader in the family and, you know, explains to Rocky, this is our motto and these are our rules. And Rocky just said, I'm like, (laughs) he's the coolest kid in the world. That's awesome. The third, that's like self-care. I truly believe like everyone needs to read this book because it's great for relationships and particularly marriages and marriages with kids. It's called Fair Play by Eve Rodsky. And Mm -hmm. it is a game changer. It is like a very funny. It's data and evidence-based, and it really is a system on how to, having equality in the home and in a relationship is just never going to happen. Certain people are going to give more in other areas than others. The nature of our workplace is that, you know, one person who probably has a more traditional office job, there is going to have to be somebody who has a slightly more flexibility or it offsets who can be more flexible in this moment in time to handle when things go wrong with kids and families. So this book has really helped us identify it's never going to be equal, equally like divided, but what we need is something to feel fair. And now what that helped us with is anything that can be done on the computer immediately is assigned to my husband, something that requires me to be present at home or at school or taking kids to an appointment. I handle it. And Mm. my husband's the one who takes care of birthday gifts for parties, who takes care of dinner reservations or ticket purchases or RSVPing for things and putting it in the calendar, like um, re-upping Rose activities. All those things are his job, whereas I'm the one who's going to the doctors and the dentist and making sure those appointments are always on the calendar and doing school pickups when our caregivers aren't available and when something breaks in our home or if Ro gets sick and needs someone needs to get him, that's me. And it really has alleviated some of that underlying unspoken tension that we just tend to possess in relationships. Yep, yeah, it's not equal, but it's certainly fair. That's great. That's really, really great advice. You're an expert at giving advice um, and you're so thoughtful about it. So, you know, it's natural that you're um, an angel investor. Um, Tell us about the companies that you work with and how you advise them um, when it comes to growth. Yes, I am. I'm sector and industry agnostic. But what I look for is strong product market fit capital being used for either launching a new part of the business that can't be sustained with existing revenues or operational scale. Um, I think truly good businesses don't necessarily need to have a huge marketing budget behind them when they're first getting started. So if I see a company that says, you know, most of this raise is going to marketing, I go, your product must suck if you need to market Mm. it this heavily. And um, I also look for founders who are really great with cash flow management and know how to stretch a dollar. And frankly, women founders I have found are much better at that than men founders are because they've had to do more with less. Taking it back to family life, one thing that I love asking uh, guests on my show is about their mom sense moment. It's a moment that you just trusted that innate intuition that you have. So can you shed light on that? My most notable mom sense moment was earlier this summer. Obviously, Rocky had just been born. Bro was going through 
a big transition is going from being our only child and consciously like he will remember life pre brother mm. and us trying to recognize that like you will remember being an only child to now having this little baby at home that is so independent on us and this sort of division of splitting of attention and you know rather than let him kind of dwell on that I kind of just put him in a whole bunch of activities and we started all of them kind of all at once. So he started Kumon and tennis and karate <laughs> and within the span of a couple of weeks with each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, when we went in for a school meeting with his school, they kind of, we, not from his direct teacher, but from some of the other people in the room said, oh, well, don't you think that was too much? He was already going through such a huge transition, da, 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 da. And I said, we know our child. We know what he's capable of, and we were very careful to pick the right teachers and the right settings and a small group size for all of these, but I've also seen him thrive in these new environments and absolutely rise to the challenges into a more strict and rigid environment, and yeah, this was the right thing for him. And, you know, our summer was, it was a rough transition with, you know, having a baby brother, having a very like a helpless little infant, newborn Mm -hmm. on our hands and getting through that phase. And it was a whirlwind of a summer. I don't really remember it, but standing up for Roe and saying, no, like, don't you dare try to say that some of this transition has just been because we did too much. I go, this has actually, I think, been the best thing for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love Roe's school and I love his teachers and whatnot. But at the end of the day, they spend a snippet of time with your kid Mm -hmm. uh, five days a week, whereas he's you know, with me or on my mind all the time. And I see a large, him in larger settings than, you know, he necessarily operates in at school. So that was a moment where, you know, rather than letting somebody else tell me what my kid was like, I said, no, actually, this is what my kid is like. And I know my kid. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Mama knows best. That's Mama knows best. (laughs) Let's not forget our quote of the day. Um, Is there a quote that you feel like you live by that inspires you? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just work hard and be nice to people. Ooh, that's That's great. So simple. simple. It's simple, but it's true. I work really hard. I try my best to be nice. And sometimes when I'm exhausted or emotional, I have to remember that second half of the quote because it's just so much Mm -hmm. easier for me to work hard than to necessarily be considerate. But I try at that. And yeah, it's a simple quote, but it's a uh, one I truly do try to live by my best. I love it. It's now time for mom hall when we share products we love. So now onto our mom hall segment. Um, this is the fun shopping portion of the show. And I know you mentioned a ton of products and we'll link every single one, um, in the, uh, post and show notes, but is there, you know, one or maybe a couple of products that you feel are just changing your life right now? And you're like, I have to tell all my girlfriends about this and it could be related to traveling on the show or, or not. (laughs) I just started using the Phoenix, um, herbivore Phoenix oil. And I love that. I also am obsessed with Wander Beauty's, um, BRB. It is their retinoid concentrate that I think it's the reason I barely wear makeup anymore. It Mm. just is a game changer. But if I do wear makeup, I'm wearing usually the Kosas Tinted Foundation Oil, which is just super light. It's also incredibly hydrating and it just gives you the perfect amount of coverage. So that's like that on a beauty front. I'm obsessed with Tea Drops Teas. They are these um, pressed loose leaf teas that dissolve in water um, really easily and therefore you have none of that waste associated with tea bags or microplastics. And I'm really loving those. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Kindle is just like my forever favorite thing. I bring it everywhere. It's the reason I'm able to read so much and juggle multiple books at any given time. But I also am loving the audiobook app, Libro.fm. They credit your book purchases to your favorite independent bookstore, which feels awesome. And the pricing I think is better than audible. And I've 
been listening to a lot of books while I'm doing kind of passive work, whether it's dishes or tidying up or emails or whatnot. And I just finished listening to Ali Wong's book, Dear Girls, which is hilarious. Like I'm (laughs) cackling. I'm laughing so hard while listening to it. And that is the only way that book should be consumed. It should not be read. It should be listened to. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. I love, love her. Um, I have some mom hall items as well, and they're related to um, our first, you know, air travel with our kids. Um, Just figured it's apropos for this episode. So um, one is the... um, the Koala Cloud um, Adjustable Airplane Footrest. Um, long name, but it's essentially a pillow that um, you can use as a raised footrest for your kids. And um, when you fill the gap between um, the seat and the table, it becomes like a bed. They stretch out and their feet don't dangle and they can just curl up and sleep. And that's something that we used um, on our flight um, to LA, which was, you know, like the six and a half hour flight. So that was awesome. Um, Another product that does that, um, that a lot of friends of mine have used um, is the Jet Kids by Stoke Bed Box. So same thing. It's it's a little fancier um, and it is a suitcase on on wheels. And, um, so you can of course use it for packing, but then the, your kids get to just ride around the airport on it. And then it turns into, um, a bed when you open it up. Um, and that's one ninety nine. The other one, um, the koala cloud, uh, like a uh, pillow thing is around 24 bucks. So whatever you're looking to spend on your kids. And then, um, one more thing that we used again, cause I have toddlers is, um, these plush headphones. They're called cozy phones um, for kids. And I don't know if you use these, um, but they are headphones that are kind of like an ear muffler and they're really cozy so that if they want to just sleep with them, they can. I like pull them over their face um, like an eye mask when they were sleeping and um, they have these, you know, headphones built in. So when they are plugging into um, their iPad or to watch a movie, um, they can do that and it's like um, soft and, you know, kind of muffling for, for their ears and their styles, their styles are so cute. There's like a unicorn and a panda and a ninja turtle. Um, so they're, they're adorable when you see your kids like walking around the plane with them on. Um, so those are my mom haul items for this week. So Hitha, where can our listeners find you? Instagram is the best place to find me. I'm at Hitha Palapu, H-I-T-H-A-P-A-L-E-P-U. Great. And um, and your book, we'll link to that um, on the show notes as well. Um, anything else you want to share with our listeners? Um, it's been great chatting with you kind of in this <laughs> way. And um, please come by and chat with me on Instagram. Every week I do a Ask Me Anything on Fridays and... You can literally ask me anything and most times I will answer it. That's great. That's that's really great. Thank you so much for being on the show. This is Thank so much you fun. Thank for having me. Did you like my episode with Hitha Palapu? I think we all need tips when it comes to traveling on our own and with our kids. And it's nice to get a bunch of product recommendations too, right? If you like this episode, leave me a review about it. Log on to wherever you listen, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. I'm on all the platforms and tell me what you liked best. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for listening and being in my tribe. Bye, guys. That's total mom sense.